In this episode, we are talking about ID3 tags. What are they? What are they used for? And how are they relevant for podcasters? Welcome to Podcasting Tips and Tricks with Lyndall Harris, a show sharing quick, actionable tips, tricks, and advice to help you on your podcasting journey. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Podcasting Tips and Tricks. I'm your host, Lyndall Harris, and this podcast is brought to you by Podcast VA, where we make the journey easier. So in this episode, you might actually notice a bit of difference in my audio quality because I decided to slot this episode in. I'm actually up the coast at the moment and I don't have my microphone or my gear with me. So it's going to be slightly different audio quality, but I decided I wanted to slot this episode in in the schedule because it came about because I had a client inquiry and then I put a Facebook post into the group and asked the question there about people's experience and uh, what they do with their ID3 tags. And it was a lot of people came back and said, can you do an episode on it? Or they weren't quite sure what ID3 tags were and what the purpose of them are. So to start at the beginning of what is an ID3 tag or what is the tagging function, it's basically adding the metadata to the audio file. And I guess the easiest way to explain this is if you think about a music file, you see when you see it in iTunes and you see it in Spotify or even on your computer or on a CD, you see the song name, the artist, the the album title, uh, the year, the genre and all of that kind of stuff. That is the actual metadata. So by ID3 tagging your podcast files, you're adding the metadata to the podcast file. And I guess when people are listening through their podcatcher, having the tags probably don't make a big difference. But if they download it onto a phone or they download it onto their computer and you don't have the tags and it becomes separated from your podcast, then it just comes up as an untitled um, identifying tags around it. And so people will just see it as an untitled uh, song or an untitled audio file in their folders. So for that purpose, I think it's really good to add the, the tags so that if it becomes separated from a podcatcher in any way, they can see easily that it is actually one of your podcast episodes instead of it just sitting there in an untitled, unfiled kind of area. So that's actually what they do. There's numerous ways to add ID3 tags. You can go into iTunes. You can do it from exporting from uh, your editor in some cases. I know Audacity, you can add the tags there. You can add them when you're doing um, the Orphonic stage. If you use Orphonic, you can add them into your presets and they'll add them when you're converting that file there. And of course, you can add them when you're uploading into your host. Quite a number of the hosts have an option where you can tick a box and it will add the tags from the information that you've put into the hosting platform. So there is a whole lot of different ways that you can actually go about adding them. And I think it is worth doing that, even though I'm going to say there's probably not a lot of functionality in having the tags on your show. So if you set it up so that you do it easily, it's not going to be a big, massive step. I'm not sure that it's worth, I know that some places will say, you know, upload it into iTunes, add your tags and what have you. If you do that, then um, to convert files, then it's probably not an extra step. But if you're importing it into iTunes just to add your tags, then it, it is an extra step that you don't really need to take. But as far as the tags go in the ID3 tagging process, the tags or the keywords that you add in there are not really going to make a massive difference. I always do it for my clients. I think it's good practice. But from the research that I've done, I wouldn't spend a lot of time analysing what to add as tags. So for your show, you might have, you know, however many, you might have five or 10 or 20 words that you want to add against all of the the files. And then for each episode, perhaps you want to add a few extra tags. So how I do it with some of my clients is They have the show ones that we add to every show and then we might add a couple of episode-specific ones but certainly wouldn't spend too much time doing keyword research and what have you on the actual tags to add into the files there because it doesn't make a lot of difference in the end. So I guess my, my advice here is I would add them because I think it's good, as I said, if the file gets separated from the podcatcher, people can always see what it is easily or they can find it. You don't want them to download it and then go to listen to it later and not be able to find it. 
So I think it's good for, a good practice from that point of view. I would still add the tags and just obviously whatever your keywords are really, whether they're your business keywords for your website or ones that just make sense for your show and then have them there. But honestly, I wouldn't probably spend a lot of time researching and working out what the best keywords are because they don't add that much value. So I hope that's kind of answered to the question where people in the group certainly said they weren't quite sure what they are and what their function is. And if you're not part of the Australian Podcasters Collaborative Facebook group, jump over there and search for it. It is a fantastic, really supportive and engaged group and the type of place where people can ask these types of questions and they will get answered as well. So if you are wanting to join the Australian podcasting community, please head over there and join and we'd love to see you there. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, make sure you subscribe in your podcatcher so you don't miss an episode. And whilst you're there, I'd love it if you'd leave me a rating and review to help other podcasters.